Welcome everyone. My name is Zan Ta with Vipro Products and today's screencast is going to cover how to create a tapered moment frame family. Here I am in Revit 2016. I'll click new under family and we will work on using the say structural column. You'll start off with a floor plan. You'll have some reference planes and dimensions already set up. Let's go ahead and do some basic dimensioning for the things that we need. Say, for example, the length. So we'll parameterize this. And then this dimension will also parameterize it. And we'll call it column width. I like to use underscore instead of spaces just for safety's sake. Now that we've done this, we'll go ahead and adjust the sizing that we need, say 26 feet, and say the width being a foot. You'll notice things that flex and adjust. When you're working with creating families, again, make sure that your reference planes are pulled out the distances that they need and that your dimensions don't interfere. If your reference planes are pinned down, you need to make sure that they are unpinned in order for you to work with them. Move all of your dimensions out of the way because it makes your life a lot easier. And again, move the reference plane endpoints to where you need. And then lastly, the centered one that's pinned down. We do want to make sure we're moving properly. You may need to zoom in a little bit to get to the correct grip points. And again, make sure you pin down while you unpinned it temporarily. We'll head over to a front elevation. And you can see the adjustments. Now, in most families, you will see the levels created to help you as a guide. Make sure you move those out of the way. Don't delete them, just move them out of the way. And the reason is because you will see a reference plane nine times out of 10 underneath a level, and that might confuse you. We'll go ahead and set up the top reference level to the height that makes sense for our custom family. And again, move our reference planes and pull and stretch them so that we can work with them a little easier. You'll also notice that a lot of them already have names. It's a good convention to make sure you're giving them proper naming conventions. Uh, otherwise, you'll have issues down the road. I'm going to create a reference plane at the top here and align it to this level. This will aid us in the creation of the top portion of our uh, custom family. We'll start with the left side. We'll create a reference plane to define the vertical width of the bottom of the column and then one for the top of the column. We'll go ahead and give it dimensions. And the top as well. We'll go ahead and parameterize them. And we'll call the top one column top. And the bottom one column base. We'll set that as some basic sizing for now, say a foot. 
and this one will set for two feet. We can go ahead and we can take the data that we just created and mirror it, and then also create the dimension down here as well. And once we parameterize this, it will also hold. So now we've created what we need. We also need to create a couple other reference planes. One that defines the knee height, and one that defines the middle. So I will dimension one for the knee and one for the middle. We'll set this at, say, 10 feet should be fine. Parameterize this dimension as knee height. And then this one we'll set for, say, 12 feet. And this one will also be parameterized. And we'll call it beam middle height. All right. So now that we have the skeletal framework, we also need to create a couple, a couple more reference planes. Uh, one going out at an angle like this. We will go ahead and parameterize and dimension that location. And this will be our beam angle. And we will take what we just created and mirror that as well. So now we have our framework for us to start creating our extrusions and our sweeps. Start with the Create tab. We'll do a sweep. We will sketch the path, set our current plane to be the correct plane, <clears throat> and then start drawing our path. Our path for the first column is going to be to here. Zoom in if you need to. Hit that intersection. Hit this intersection. this intersection and close it. Now when you're creating <clears throat> sketch lines for the object, make sure <clears throat> excuse me, you're using the align command to align and lock the faces of the geometry to those reference planes. You do this so that if you need to flex the object, it will flex properly. If we hit the green check mark here, it will finish the creation of the path. We'll then click Edit Profile and work with a view, like a floor plan view, to create the sketch of the profile that is going to be extruded on that path. We'll go ahead and give it the correct thicknesses that we need. And Again, verify that you're using the align command to align and lock the geometry that you need to its correct reference planes. Otherwise, you may have issues when you flex the geometry. We'll hit the green check mark to finish the creation of the sketch profile. we we'll hit the green check mark to finish the creation of the sweep. Shade it up and see what it looks like in 3D. Head back to the front elevation, and we'll do that panel inside. So in this case, we'll do an extrusion. Make sure we're setting the correct plane that we want to work with. We can use the pick method and locking feature to create the line and lock it automatically so we don't have to use the align command. Go ahead and verify your start and end extrusion thickness. Okay, we'll do this. And finish it. If we look at it in 3D, it looks fine. We'll go ahead and take what we've just created and mirror it 
the center. Again, just because we mirrored it does not mean that it's aligned properly. So use the align command and align the geometry properly. Otherwise, when you flex it, you'll have issues. So now that we have the left and the right side created, we need to go through the process of creating the top of the geometry. And in this case, it's also going to be a sweep. We'll sketch the path. And we will hit this intersection to this intersection and then to this intersection. Finish the path, edit the profile. To create the profile, we'll put it on a head to the left view is fine. And again, creating the sketch that we need. And again, I like to over-exaggerate the shape of the sketch that I'm working with so I can verify that I'm using the align command to align the edges that I need properly. We'll set this thickness as well to the same thickness as everything else. This kind of makes it simple. Finish the creation of the profile. Finish the creation of the sweep. Let's head to the front elevation and do the same thing for the bottom. Create <clears throat> sweep. Create sketching the path. Picking the intersection. To this intersection and then to this intersection. Finish the creation of the path, edit the profile, and draw the sketch <clears throat> of the profile. Again, making it the correct thickness that you need and verifying that it's aligning properly. <clears throat> Finish the check mark for the creation of the profile. Hit the green check mark to finish the creation of that sweep. And then lastly, we'll hit to the front elevation and we'll create an extrusion again of the inside panel. Just be careful when you're using the pick command you're picking the correct edge that you need. <clears throat> and when you're in sketch mode, you need to make sure that your sketch is one clean loop. No gaps, no overlaps, no stray lines anywhere. Verify the extrusion start and end. And finish the creation of it look at it in 3D, it looks pretty good. Now we need to flex it. So we'll head over to our family types window and we'll make adjustments. Let's make this say 5 degrees. Uh, let's make it say 30 feet long. Let's make the knee height 9 feet. Let's make the base 9 inches. Let's make the column top 1 foot 6 inches and hit OK. Now we can see that it's actually flexing properly. Verify in all the different views, just because you never know. You might have an anomaly where you didn't align and lock something. Now if you want it to kind of look a little cleaner, you can use the Join Geometry command, multiple joins, and start joining everything together. And that way it looks like a single entity. And there you have it, how to create a custom family that is a tapered moment frame. Thank you very much for watching, and this is Zahn from Reaper Products.